Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike. I am the American Analyst, and tonight we are going to be talking about the coronavirus. Is it time to get worried? If you like what I do, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Twitter and Minds. Let's get into it. Okay, so there's two big pieces of news concerning the coronavirus today. Uh, the first is that, as you can see on your screen, there was a 3.35 drop in the S&P 500. I don't know what the uh, NASDAQ did, but uh, I, am, I think it's safe to assume that both were significantly down. And the reason that the stocks took such a hit today was because it w it has been reported that this virus has uh, spread to uh, Italy and South Korea. But Italy is the one that is particularly concerning. Uh, I've read a few articles on this, and for now, it seems that the main concern is that it will spread to nations whose healthcare service is not as developed because as of right now as of right now it it looks like about 80% of people get infected that's an insane number but there's a 2% fatality rate and i do not mean to sound callous but that 2% rate has as so far has been among the uh, elderly Again, I don't mean to sound callous, but that's the current situation. So that's why U.S. stocks took a, a tumble today, uh, because the virus is spreading. Um, I don't think it's I don't think it's cause for panic as of yet. Um, but it 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 does look likely that as many as two percent. I think that's probably the highest it could get. As many as 2% of the world's population could be um, killed by the coronavirus. So it, it is extremely serious. This is going to get a lot worse before it gets better, in my opinion. Um, I, think it, I think it's definitely going to get a lot worse before it gets better. I mean, 2% of 7 billion is an insane amount. I mean, what's 1%? 70 million? So... 140 million people that's that's crazy um which br which brings me to this the last the most recent um pandemic in human history this was the spanish flu the so-called spanish flu of uh, 1918 uh also known as the H1N1 virus, if you'll if you remember back um, in the mid 2000s, I think it was um, this particular strain. Strain, I guess, would be the right word. This particular strain reared its ugly head again, but was at that time was managed to be uh, contained. And as you can see from this article from the center for uh, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, that looks like the first reported case was in military personnel in the spring of 1918 affected for at least or it led to the deaths rather of at least 50 million people worldwide with 675,000 in the United States and once again it affected mostly um, people under 5 and those over 65 uh, and that, yeah, one third of the populations of, of the world's population became infected. So, and it's looking like, as I said, uh, uh, eighty percent may be infected by this this current coronavirus. So, we have seen this thing before in the modern era. We have seen it before. It's not unprecedented. Most people don't even know about this. That's something to keep in mind when I think when things get worse. 
or not not that that's a bad way to put it when things start getting blown out of proportion right now everything's being tamped down i think but when things start to get blown out of proportion it's important to remember that most people don't know about the the last flu pandemic so i would keep that in mind when I, that said it's all it always pays uh to be prepared to be prepared the interesting thing about this is that why it's called the Spanish flu? Um, this is not really related, but the reason it's called the Spanish flu is that most people now believe that it actually did not start in Spain, that it actually started somewhere in uh, Western Europe, in the trenches. But as you can see, the first case was identified in military personnel in 1918. So, anybody have any idea what was going on with military personnel in the spring of 1918? They were all, millions of, of young men were in the trenches. And so that allowed this disease to incubate and then spread, and then spread around the world. But the interesting thing is, neither of these governments, neither on the Allies or the Central Powers, and it, it would be accurate to call them the allies at this point because in 1918 Russia was out and the United States was in so it would be accurate and neither the allies nor the central powers wanted to admit that this disease existed because everybody could tell that the end game it, it was the end game as as Dr. Strange would say it was the end it was it was the Germans had one last chance and if the allies could just hold on they would win and uh, which ultimately happened but of course neither side wanted to admit that they had this huge disease going through their their countries so the first cases that were reported to the media were in spain so that's where it got the name so i thought that was a very interesting story and actually it brings me to my next point i do not there's something that the chinese government is not telling us about this disease um, I don't know what it is. I could speculate, but I'm not going to. What I will say is this. There are stories of... Let me show you this first. So, this is the distance right here. You can see this is 25 kilometers, roughly, from the... Hubei Vocational College of Biotechnology, which is the only level four biotechnology lab in all of China. And there are articles going back to 2017 about Westerners, i.e. people in the United States, Canada, Britain, France, etc., um, concerned that the Chinese government would not be able to contain the level of infectious diseases that were inside of um, a level four facility. 2017, I've seen articles three years ago now. And that's this is 30 kilometers from the Wuhan seafood market. Again, I, I don't want to say something conspiratorial, but there is the most likely thing is there's something that that the Chinese government is not telling us because when when the way I picture this look at the, this is a city the way I was picturing it from how it was being described it's like oh this is this disease developed like out in the wilderness like it way in in Western China way out in the wilderness and and somebody just happened to catch it by accident look at this this is a major city look how does a, how did a, does a disease incubate in a major city? It's obviously very easy to spread, but it's not it's not that easy to incubate a disease. Actually, I'm I don't know that, <laughs> I I don't know that. But uh, uh, what I'm saying is, this is the most. It's unlikely that this is a coincidence. It's very unlikely that this is a coincidence. And again, I'm not saying anything, this was something nefarious. Most likely it was something accidental. 
but we are certainly not being given the whole story by the Chinese government. And I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I would just say this. Like I said, I think things are going to get worse before they get better. But it's not going to be that bad. As I said, most people don't know about the last pandemic. They, it, It's been largely forgotten by the general public. Humanity is going to be fine. But it definitely pays to be prepared. Thank you all for listening. My name is Mike. I am the American Analyst. If you like what I do, please be sure to subscribe to this video. Like, subscribe to this video, subscribe to my channel, like this video, follow me on Twitter and Minds. Have a good evening. Thank you all for listening. This is Mike, the American Analyst. Follow me on Twitter, Minds, and subscribe to me on YouTube. And be sure to hit that bell notification. I'll be coming out with new videos every single day for your viewing enjoyment. Have a good one.